this is our cow bone. The ends are called the epiphysis, and on the articular surface, we have hyaline cartilage. The shaft in the middle is called the diaphysis. Around the outside of the bone, we have the periosteum. The bone is formed by compact bone that we can see here and spongy bone at the ends. The cavity in the middle here is called the medullary cavity which contains yellow bone marrow which is adipose or fat. In the spongy bone we have red bone marrow. The red bone marrow is responsible for making the formed elements in the blood. Now let's take a closer look. Working from the outside in, we have the periosteum, which is composed of two layers. We have the outer fibrous layer and the inner osteogenic layer here. Next we come to the lamellae, and around the outside we have circumferal lamellae. And then further in we have these concentric lamellae which form the osteons. If we turn it slightly we can see that the orientation of the, of the collagen fibers is in a different direction in each concentric layer which helps give the bone strength On the inside here, we have the endosteum, and then we can see the spongy bone. These are the trabeculae here, and the red bone marrow, which is responsible for making the formed elements in the blood. If we turn it sideways, we can see here we have the perforating canals and then here we have the central canal that runs up each osteon. Now if we take a closer look even further, here we have one osteon. We can see the concentric lamellae running around. Here we have the central canal that contains a vein, an artery, and a nerve. We can see the lacunae here, which is where the osteocytes reside. And then they have the little canoniculi, are the cytoplasmic extensions that come out. If we turn it once more, We can see the osteocytes represented in the lacunae here with the canaliculi going to the other osteocytes, aiding in communication and the transfer of nutrients.